She was elected on her policies and her strength. She just shown she has no strength. Oh, oh dear. I'm very, very angry. So, I'm at Tory Party Conference here in Birmingham. It's always a little highlight of mine. There's an air of, I would say, turmoil enveloping the Conservative Party and unfortunately the country. So I want to gauge the mood of people here at Tory Party Conference, what they think about Conservative Party policies, what they think about the impact that has on real people, and just how much trouble are the Tories in. You announced £45 billion of tax cuts without setting a fiscal framework. It precipitated a £65 billion emergency bond buy-in programme by the Bank of England to protect pension funds. The pound tanked. A thousand mortgage deals withdrawn, and now the lady not for turning has announced a massive U turn on a policy. This is surely the worst start of any Prime Minister. Liz Ross, out of ten, how's she doing? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Nine? Ten. Ten. Ten, ten yeah, I oh, know you won't agree with that, I Owen. Mean, I mean, she crashed the economy. Not yet. Well, I mean, there was a massive sell off of, of uh, government bonds. The. Uh, the pound no, that's, that's the markets overreacting and, and also the global economy. Right, it's just it happens specifically to Britain, even though... No, it hasn't, it's happened all around the world. It's ticking every second and it's, it's ticking lower. Actually, maybe we can show you a chart just in the last kind of 10 minutes or so. Well, you can see. She's crashed the pound. The head No, she hasn't crashed the pound. It's an international thing. So this is just, this is literally just over the course of, of today, OK? So it's from last night. Um, and this is the pound versus the dollar, but it's a similar kind of picture against the euro as well. No leader has ever taken over, crashed the markets and had a polling class. No, but, but you have to look at, you know, the rest of the world as well. That was more or less where the statement happened. So you see that point where it kind of picks up a little bit and then it's down by about a full cent against the dollar in a matter of a few seconds. No, no, no. no. Mortgage payments are going no, up. No, no, no. You know that's not strictly true. The markets around the world have got global pressures through geopolitical look, out, events. I think if you look globally, you'll see that the global economy is suffering. So these kinds of lines, when currencies fall abruptly, immediately, in a kind of vertical manner, that is a sign of investors out there being worried about sterling and that's basically a proxy for saying them being worried about the UK economy and pulling money out. What, we, what I just showed you, that's down to the lowest level again since 1985. I think she's doing well. I'm very pleased with what they're doing, very happy. Goodbye. What would you give Liz Truss out of 10 so far? Oh, I wouldn't like to comment. Not great, is it, so far? Not ideal. No, no. Did you rate for her? Uh, no, I didn't, no, no. Right. What, ranked her 10? Yeah. On, on, based on what? What, her performance as Prime Minister of the country? Oh, 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 no. What, you can't give her... I didn't vote for her, that's all I say. Hey, didn't we speak last year? Yes, we did, I've even got the hat to show. Let's have a look. Yes, you do have to make, make Britain... Come on, pull it on. OK, sure. Put it on. So, Hello again. how is... How's it, how do you think this is doing out of 10? Not very good, but then again, I didn't vote for her. It's not my fault, Governor. You voted for Vichy Sedak? No, I didn't vote for either of them. I spoiled my ballot. Oh, I see. I voted for people who I thought were more competent, like Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's how facetious I was. Oh, five out of ten. Five? Oh, it's not great, is it? No, it's, it's not good. It isn't. She's just resigned, basically. A U-turn is effectively a resign. She's resigned? But no, but that's what a U-turn means. We, she was elected on her policies and her strength. She's just shown she has no strength. Oh, oh dear. I'm very, very angry. <laughs> The government has today performed a huge U-turn and abandoned its plan to scrap the 45 pence top rate of income tax. The announcement from Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng came just a day after the Prime Minister Liz Truss backed the policy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Thank you, conference. What a day. It has been tough, 
but we need to focus on the job in hand. But I can be frank, I know the plan put forward only 10 year, uh, days ago has caused a little turbulence. I get it, I get it. Uh, we are listening and have listened. And now I want to focus on delivering the major parts of our growth package. Crazy quiet time, he speaks, did you see it? I did. What do you think? Uh, well, obviously there was no new announcements, so he, <laughs> obviously. Did, but, he um, didn't include the line still of was staying the course. And I keep Britain moving, I think is the, is the line, isn't it? I think that's like, the keep, word. Keeping the markets just, moving. Keeping the markets moving. Oh yeah, keep, keeping the markets exciting. They're yeah. <laughs> no, he's had a busy week. He's had a busy few days to be like quasi. I mean, isn't it just because most of the population find cutting taxes for the rich and cutting benefits for the poor in a massive cost of living crisis, is it toxic? I think that's probably uh, true, yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't have done it myself at this stage. I mean, I'm in favour of doing it, but not at this stage. P perhaps when the economy's more benign. I can't understand why anybody would think the priority was to do that. Right. I understand the Conservatives want to reduce taxes, but surely you wouldn't do that as a priority. It's not a priority. I think she's trying to sort of do the that Margaret Thatcher thing in the space of two years, yeah. um, which is obviously... And she doesn't have North Sea oil. No, she doesn't. But I think what she's trying to do is sort of actually say to people, you know, this is a new government, we're going to have a new direction. And um, especially when it comes to economic policy, this sort of, you know, uh, supply side reform that actually needs about 10, 11 years. What well, Thatcher said, she didn't have enough time to do it. Um, and she's trying to fit that all in, squeeze that all into two years. So for me, when it comes to the top rate of income tax, I don't know why that was the first point of call to be abolished. I think that it should have been uh, the basic rate and per increased personal allowances um, but again I think it's one of these things where it's it, what's happened has happened and pe people sort of looking towards the future. Did you vote for her? Yes. Do you regret voting for her? I don't know. I mean did you support Rishi Sunak? Yes. Do you think he's feeling vindicated? I think I would be if I was Rishi. Liz your plans your own economic advisor has said that that would lead to mortgage rates interest rates going up to seven percent can you imagine what that's going to do for everyone here and everyone watching? That's thousands of pounds on their mortgage bill. It's going to tip millions of people into misery and it's going to mean we absolutely Rishi. have no chance of winning the next election either. Yeah, I just want to know what the plan is for mortgages because I was actually in the process of getting a mortgage as a young person and I was told my initial interest rate would be 4.5%. Um, and I was told today that the lender has pulled that offer and now the best offer that I can get is about 10.5%. Um, which... Wow. Do you fear that you have put the country on a path that it didn't ask for because you believe very strongly that it will lead to growth. Finally, what happens if it doesn't work? How is her money budget for you? For me, largely relevant. Right. It's just the markets were a bit like, ah. Markets come and go. And, uh, you know, I, I live... I, I basically a pensioner, so rates of tax don't worry me too much, and the markets will come back again. People's mortgage payments are going to go up because of all of this. I don't have a mortgage, along with a lot of people who don't have a mortgage. I, yeah, but don't you care about the people who do? Yes, but I think we're in a new paradigm of increased uh, interest rates anyway for other reasons. And you've got to see the Fed, for example, in the States has increased interest rates by 3%. They've got like 2% here. If there hasn't been any sort of mini budget in the States. No, it's just interest rates are going to rise higher than they would have done. Yes, if it and that will also benefit some people. It will benefit pensioners and pension funds, for example. So high interest rates aren't necessarily a bad thing. They do have their advantages. Um, at the moment, yeah, interest rates around the world, they've all gone up. It's not yeah. just unique to the United right. Kingdom. Basically... And a lot of that is, as I said to you, Owen, down to geopolitical events that are completely out of our Everyone control. Is. That's why the government shouldn't have made things worse. That's the point. Because what it did crashed the market. But, I mean, the, the Bank of England had to intervene, not because of Putin. They intervened because of trust. She crashed the economy over that. Mm -hmm. But it's gone back up again. Do you, do you, so, but people are still going to pay more on their mortgages because of it? Unfortunately, yes. Well, I just, people watching this might feel that a bit flippant given they're going to pay through the teeth for a policy they've yeah. abandoned. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a shame, but there you go. That's what's happened. This seems a bit like, well, that's life. Well, at the end of the day, it is.
Owen Jones came up to me today and had a go at the funders of the Tory party. Jacob, great to see you. How are you going to cut people's benefits in real terms? Are you cutting universal credit? Universal credit's not being cut. I don't in know real terms? Come from. Below universal so will it rise with inflation? Cut. Will yeah. it rise with inflation? The that is not my policy area. I'm the Secretary of State you, for Business. You must ask yeah, the Secretary the, of State for DWP. You've got collective DWP. responsibility. Do you think it's fair benefits, to cut taxes on big business, but also cut benefits for poor people? Is benefits that fair? are not being cut. You're talking nonsense. In, if they don't rise in line with inflation, no, no. they're being cut, Jacob. You, you, where do you get your evidence from this? The fact that you just make things up doesn't make How them so. I, I haven't uh, made things up. I'm yes, asking, I'm asking, are you they going invent, to rise in line invent, with inflation? You invent things to fit Why your socialist invent, view of the world. Jacob. And then you expect me Jacob. to say that they are on Do you accept happy? if they don't rise okay. in inflation, that's a real terms cut in benefits? Do you accept that? Do you accept but, that? But, but I'm not accepting your premise that you What's invented the premise? something. I haven't invented anything. If, <laughs> if benefits don't rise something. in lines with inflation... You have invented something. Jacob, if they don't rise this in line with inflation, way, way. that's a real terms cut. Do you accept that or not? Now a new rebellion is growing among Conservative MPs over a planned squeeze on public spending and potential benefit cuts. Our political correspondent Joe Pike has been asking what's next at the Tory conference in Birmingham. What's the next U-turn, Chancellor? Are you going to be cutting the welfare budget next? The policy decided by the last Prime Minister to uprate benefits with inflation, you don't seem minded to do that. We haven't made a decision on that issue well, you, yet. You, you My are priority the Prime Minister, so you decide. I mean, you, you seem but minded. Not... You're, you're the Prime Minister. You said you're going to uprate pensions by inflation. You're the Prime Minister. I'm saying to you, you don't seem minded to do that. We haven't made a decision on that issue yet. I think we have far too many people in this country who are fit to work, who are able to work and should be working. They choose, they choose to top up their salaries with tax credits or they, uh, you know, the benefit street uh, kind of culture, I think, does, is a feature of modern Britain. What do you think about cutting benefits because they're going to do that? Well, obviously, that's a stupid idea and okay. they shouldn't do that. It, it, it would simply be immoral to reduce benefits, to reduce universal credit. 70% of, of people on universal credit in Wiltshire at the moment are, are racking up debt at the moment sure. right now. So if we don't increase to that level, uh, and particularly if you don't do that and then are, are cutting taxes for, for the particularly wealthy, no, that, that really would be immoral. It wouldn't be the right thing to do. But it looks as if we're rowing back and, and, and not doing that. Now the where's discussion that, needs to... Now, well, you've had, the 45p tax has been rowed back. No. But what about benefits? They haven't rowed back on benefits. Well, the discussion needs to be had about it. Jacob e. Small said it was, was socialist scaremongering to me when I suggested that. Well, OK, uh, certainly as the leader of a council who has to deal with the impact of, of housing people and universal credit, who has housing stock, where a large number of people there are on those benefits, it, it's a very serious issue. I know very well that there are an awful lot of what used to be called in the parlance of the last century, dole scroungers. So I would be very happy if they increase the benefits for the people who deserve them at the expense of some of those who don't. It's quite a gruesome way to describe people, isn't it? I mean, a vast majority it of people... It is a horrible just... way to describe people. That's why I said this is outmoded language yeah. of the last century. Yeah. But they used to be called dole scroungers, which is a very succinct way of putting the people who claim benefits to which they are not properly entitled. Right, I see. I mean, obviously, the vast majority of people with benefits are struggling. And often on, on low pay. They've been worked, they've been low paid. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and they what? ought to receive benefits, and they would receive more benefits if we weren't busy paying a lot of people who actually spend their benefits on, uh, well, things which are probably not necessarily even legal, but certainly to describe them as absolutely poor, as somebody did on the internet recently, is nonsense. There is no absolute poverty in this country, thank God. I mean, charities will tell you that there's a big phenomenon in this country of parents skipping hot meals to ensure their children yeah. are fed. That is absolute poverty. That's a, this is a rich country. Is, People skip hot meals. That is not absolute. That is relative poverty. There is no absolute poverty. Well, I mean, what, how are you defining absolute poverty? People starving to death. Yes, people who do not have food and shelter. I regard that as absolute poverty. I mean, that, that Relative means... poverty is merely that you can't afford the Sky television, you can't afford the foreign holiday, so you, you can't afford the so car. Think... I'm saying absolute poverty is shortage of the necessities of life, yes, which, are essentially, which okay. are essentially food and shelter. Yeah, which is, which is parents skipping hot meals to make sure their children are fed. That is, if it were necessary, that would indeed be poor but it is still only relative poverty. So why do you think malnutrition is a gen... I mean, mal uh, charities are clear that malnutrition exists in Britain. It is certainly so true. So that's absolute poverty. And so Surely does obesity. 
and so does obesity. An awful lot of people, uh, unfortunately, are not able to look after themselves. It's often because healthy food is more expensive. Possibly, but you know everybody can afford a loaf of bread and butter a day. Millions of people are poor in this country, and yeah, but not and starving. Three, not, I mean, three, million not, pe three million people are at risk of malnutrition in Britain. Don't, you don't believe that? I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it in, that... in my hometown. I don't see people dying on the streets. I, I don't see people on malnutrition. I just don't see it. Do, does that not suggest maybe you live in a bit of a bubble? No, I don't think so, because I live in Northumberland, which is the southeast of Northumberland is one of the most de deprived parts of the country. And yes, they are. They have got some difficulties, but they're not. They're not starving. Not, so, people are not starving on the streets. I've got rickets. Charities will say very like the people they work with. Parents skip hot meals to feed their kids. Do you not believe that? I find it hard to believe. So it's clear there are going to be real terms cuts to spending. Yes. To fund these tax cuts. Yeah. What 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 do you want to cut? Well, I would like to cut uh, quangos and stuff like that. You see, they always say that. It, yeah, it just, yeah. It's just every Tory government. I mean, they said that for the last 12 years. It's just it's people's default thing. Yeah. Like, what quangos and how much money do you think that would save? Because uh, well, you're talking huge sums of money. Yeah. Right? Quangos aren't well, huge sums of money. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's uh, a quango? It's a, a non-government uh, invest. It's, it's not like government investment. No, uh, but name a quango that you get rid of. <laughs> well... <laughs> Just one quango. I can't know one because I haven't got a list of them. But you can't just say you're going <laughs> to... Yeah. It's just that it just seems cutting quangos, not naming a quango is part of the problem. Because yeah, yeah. It just seems in practice it's going to be yeah. health. It's going to be yeah. health, education. Yeah, yeah. Fire uh, stations. Yeah, which, which we all need, don't we? Yeah. It'd be helpful. Yes. <laughs>when their bills arrive, they can either cut their consumption or they can get higher salary or higher wages, go out there and get that new job. Sure, it's That's the changes. approach the government is taking. We're saying, to look, let's, let's, create, or let's benefits create growth so households can afford their bills as well as the brilliant work we're doing on energy bills. People know that when their fuel bills arrive, they can either cut their consumption or get a higher salary, higher wages, go out there and get that new job. That's encouraging aspiration. Is that really, what, so care workers? So is that the answer for care workers? But then you've got to look at that. Most of the, most of the care workers work for private companies. Right. Those private companies have got to look what they're paying their staff. Well, care it, that's why care workers should organise in a union and go on strike. Well, no, it depends if you agree with unions and strike. I don't think any union should hold the, the country to ransom. But what we're saying there, he's not saying employers should pay their weight, workers more. He's saying that people in low pay should get a new job. That's encouraging aspiration. There's nothing wrong with that. So encouraging care workers, for example, to abandon the profession and go and get... No, it's place. encouraging people to aspire to right. earn better, to do better for them and their families. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you think it's realistic in a, to, to say the solution to a cost of living crisis is for low-paid workers to get higher, jo higher paid jobs? No, I think part and parcel of a package, it's good to encourage aspiration. Jake Berry, he's your chair, said people know that when their bills arrive, they can either cut their consumption or get a higher salary, higher wages, go out there and get that new job. Do you think that's realistic? Tell well, me. not really. I mean, I, I, not, not at all. You know, you are in the job you're in. I mean, you're lucky to have a job and you're grateful and you're happy with the work so that you do. Why is he saying stuff like that? It just sounds completely absolute. Well, you'd have to ask him, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's true. Just, and I'm not him. What he said was... Um, people know that when their bills arrive, they can either cut their consumption or get a higher salary, higher wages, go out there and get that new job. That's uh, absolute common sense. Do you think that's realistic, just to tell lots well, of people are, we, 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 jobs to go and get, uh, get we, a better We have salary? absolutely full employment at the moment. There are more job vacancies than there are people unemployed. So, yes, so, so, so yes, it is realistic. So care workers should just go and get a higher paid job? If that's what they wish to do, then yes, because the job vacancies exist. So, just to say people should just exist on their low-paid jobs. It's that lots of low-paid jobs are actually really, really important to a whole of society and actually just expecting people to somehow get a, a higher paid job because you say full employment but lots of those jobs are low paid as well yes millions they are. of jobs are low people paid people can always find jobs at the moment if that's what they wish well, to do no we're talking about high paid jobs yes. well no do you think I mean, there's lots and lots and lots of high paid jobs yes that low there are and right. uh, pay is increasing across the board I mean obviously if you're a care worker who can't go, go and work as a city solicitor not, you think pay is increasing across the board yes vastly so in some cases, by 50% or more in the legal uh, sector. So pay is, de in real terms, overall declining in the city. So, no, you're talking bollocks.
I'm a staunch conservative, right? Yep. You don't have to. I have right to right. say, right, by the way, right. not great so far, is it? Right. I'm not impressed. Right. Not impressed. Mixed so far. bag, I'd say. Crazy the extremist, right, in terms of the tax stuff, mate. Yeah. Even I did not anticipate that. No. She's gone to new lengths. Right, incredible. Can I ask, it's Crazy Carl Tang's done his speech, and he talks about it's not inevitable that Britain has managed economic decline. But the Tories have been in power for 12 years, so does that mean we've had 12 years of managed economic decline under the Conservatives? Great question. Can I come back to you in a sec? Cool. Look, if it was my choice as a long life Conservative, right, he would not be Chancellor. By the way, guys, you know I'm here for bloody jolly up, don't you? But you remember the Conservatives? Which, yeah. let's be honest, as a business owner, it does help you, doesn't it? Okay. Remember the Tory party. What, what do you think about them cutting benefits in real terms? Because that's what they're proposing. They won't keep up with inflation. That's what's floated. Do you think that's fair, given the cost of living crisis? Ezra McVeigh's condemned it. We've got, we've got to make cuts somewhere, haven't we? So do you think... Right, we... by the way, is this going on TV? I love it. No, this is... Yeah, when you say we've got to make cuts, that's, that's poor people. That's people who are struggling, you know? I mean, do you think it's, it's fair those cuts should fall on the, on the backs of, of, of people who are struggling already? I think you've got to incentivise people, yeah? Do you think it incentivises low So I've been at the eye, I've had a couple of drinks, right? So. I, I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> right, I've had a couple of beverages. Sure. Okay. Great questions. Look, we're in a tricky situation, aren't we? Let's be honest, right? Yeah. No one's got a bloody ideal solution, have they? Nobody's got an ideal solution, right? But, I like you, right? I admire your, your work, actually. Right. Your body of work, can I be honest? You don't have to take the mic. I know. I actually admire a lot of your body of work, right? Okay. You, what about what about people who are low paid having their benefits cut though? Again, just, why is that incentivising? Well, them. I'm making a distinction here between people who deserve it and those who don't. Right. It just Can I just anyone. find my friend? We'll come back in a second. Can I just finally, just, just, just want clarity. Yeah. Do you think the fall in the pound, the emergency Bank of England intervention to prop up pension funds, the likely increase in interest rates and mortgage payments as a result, is that caused by Liz Truss or not, nothing at all? I'm so sorry. I'm actually quite late for an event, okay. but thank you so much That's for your right. time. Have Enjoy. a lovely day. Take care, you as well. Just finally, if a Labour government had introduced a budget which was based completely against the policies they promised at the last election and which caused a sell-off of government bonds, pension funds being bailed out and the pound plummeting, what would you say? Come on, be honest, what would you say in those circumstances? Uh, honest, I don't know. Until it was put in front of me, I don't know the I answer to say, the question, Owen. I think, I think you know what you'd say. Well, you're putting words or thoughts into my mind. I honestly don't know. I would sit down as I do now. You know, just because I'm a member of the Conservative Party doesn't mean I'm completely, you know, with blue tinted glasses. I'll listen to every argument. Do you think she'll lead the Labour Tories into the next election? Yeah, I hope so. Do you think Liz Truss can win an election? If she can convince the country that free markets work in the next two years, then yes. If not, then unfortunately we're going to see a Keir Starmer government after the next election. Very lastly, because you've got to go. Liz Truss, will she lead the stories into the next general election? Of course she will. Really? Yes. Definitely, no. The Tory party. Where did it all go wrong? What do you say? I don't know. Is it the delusion? Is it the lack of understanding or just outright contempt towards people whose lives are very difficult and been made more difficult by the policies this party's implemented in 12 long years? Is it the commitment to an ideology which has only delivered stagnating economic growth? Even that lot admit that. And the worst squeeze in wages in this country since the defeat of Emperor Napoleon. This party is in a terrible mess and they are staring an electoral calamity down the barrel of a gun. But this story's not over. They've got two more years in power, probably. And however long this trust lasts, might not be very long, there is still a lot of time for them to try and reshape this country in their own image. And if you don't like that, then I think adopt the race position, because there's a lot more to come. On entering Downing Street to act.
To make these videos challenging the Tories and their ideology, we depend on you. We're not bankrolled by millionaires, billionaires, hedge fund managers, or surprisingly enough, Tory donors. It's all thanks to you. So if you can support us with whatever you can on patreon.com forward slash Owen Jones 84, we promise we'll make as many videos as we can challenging the powerful and offering an alternative.